Andrew. Um, it's interesting, right, because it's a multivariate equation and then we just keep adding variables. That's sort of what's, I think, happening, which is exciting for a mathlete, um, daunting for a media buyer. So channel, um, this qualitative assessment you know, of adjacency, like that's really hard. And I mean, equivalency is hard, which is the nut you know, we're trying to crack with OCR. But then this whole qualitative assessment of you know, brand match and adjacency is even harder. Like, are we, are we, are you guys going to try? Is anybody going to try and tackle that? And how do we, what's the lens we should take, you think, to address that? Yeah, so um, I'll, I'll give my opinion. This is my opinion alone, right? But I, I, it, there's a dizzying amount of factors that can go into this, right? And the world is getting more complex, not less complex, right? Um, as uh, I, I firmly believe that there have to be a set of, of standards for what people look at as success, right? And then all the other variables are things you could, they're levers you can pull to get to that success. They're signals you can use, right? So as a, as a company that does data and research, that's an interesting question, right? Because all of a sudden, the question of research becomes different. And I, I spent a lot of time talking to someone about this today. In some ways, research used to be figuring out what worked and what didn't work you know, after something ended. More and more, it's about understanding what data is relevant while something's going on. Right? So I think, to some extent, everybody's going to have data that's different. Everyone's got unique assets they bring to the table. You look at this table, everyone's got different things, right? from subscriber lists to server accounts to you name it, right? and, I, and to, to knowing adjacencies, to knowing distribution mechanisms. And I think everyone's going to look at, have to look at the factors they have and that they can pull and then come to conclusions around it. Okay. Michael, I mean, it's interesting, right? I, I asked Roland about sort of the challenge of publishers, and part of that was because I was telling you I just was in a meeting with you know, your colleague just prior to coming here, and we were talking about you know, the, the need for tools as well for publishers, right, to help them sort of retain and protect the value of, of the inventory and not become victim to sort of all the levers that are on the buy side today. I mean, what, what do you guys see as, because you're doing a good job, I think, of retaining value in CPMs on the on network. Like, what, do you, what's, what are your levers? So, so for us, it's, we're a little different. Because we syndicate content as well, and, and I know um, Daily Motion does as well, for us, we've also built a, a tech suite behind that, that to actually help publishers do this. So one of the things you talked about was do you, you asked whether or not um, sort of the traditional um, content generators were seeing video as a means to effectively tell a story, right? Whether, you know, digitally, historically was basically written more like a newspaper or like a magazine. And so for us, what we can offer is editor suites. We did this first with Huffington Post and now we do it externally where as you're crafting your story from the beginning, you can log in, you can see the different videos, you can choose sort of where you want to pull it from. You can pull it from us, you can pull it from weather, you can pull it from wherever. And as you're crafting your story, you move, digital, you move video into the beginning of the crafting of that story. And I think your original journalists are probably doing the same thing. So I think one of the things that happens organically, and we're trying to build tools behind that, is journalism's changing as well. And, and the generation of this content, people are starting from a, from a video standpoint, as opposed to, I conceive of it, I block it, I write it, and then video supports it. So I think some of it will happen organically. You see it in J schools, you see it in places like that. But we're also then, there's also, for, for the pure play digital guys, we believe in the tech stack behind that that can help facilitate that. That there's content and then you can enable content at scale. So that approach is an interesting question because we actually, you know, going back to one of my publisher clients, we have this exploration of sort of what potential paths were, right? And we came to this conclusion that, well, to win big in video, meaning like, you know, really interesting top line dollars, it's not about content, it's about technology, right? Well, the so, money in the web is always in the pipes. But well, you got to put something through the pipe, so it's a balance. Well, but but, yeah, but remember, the I construct mean, is that compared to television, right? And right, Peter, what you're seeing come to now, you. um, it's a terrible word, but it's used. Uh, you, you create predators, producer editors, the same people who are, <laughs> yeah. are they use it. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's tweetable. Um, <laughs> but a producer, editor is a guy who shoots it, edits it, and is on screen, and it's really fast. It may not be um, the, the highest HD quality, but it's chock full of news and information and content. And, and it, it, it's a video first mentality and on on, on really low cost. Well, that's interesting because you're talking about going sort of up, 
upstream on the production side, right? Sure. But then, I mean, that's kind of what Hulu is, right? That's an investment in technology on the distribution side, right, to get to market. And then the Comcast sort of meeting of, of you know, the giants there, I mean, that's a platform and a technology play, right, with X1, X3, like the, all mm -hmm. that. So, I mean, are they table stakes? Like, I guess, can, I guess what, what I'm wondering is, is the nascent, you know, online video space, when we talk about scarcity and we talk about content being king and it's quality and not quantity because it's all about, you know, some say, someone, I was quoted, someone on the earlier panel in our sort of pre-game session said, that you know, some OCR and things like that evolved also because you needed something to hedge against the cat on the skateboard, right? You need some confidence that wasn't what you were buying. So, with all of that, can you really is content really king in online video? Because my conclusion, listening to all of you, is that good content isn't enough to make a decent amount of of sustainable revenue in the online video space today. I mean, I'd say that a lot of it's defined by the audience. And an example that I gave. Uh, you know, and certainly we see a huge value in like what NBC does. Uh, you know, we're a distributor of Hulu, so that has its place. But there's audience that are consuming content that is, you know, online native uh, video content uh, that has a very scalable audience. And I'm sure, and we know, we see this, that advertisers want to be where audiences are. And that's a phenomenon that has happened relatively new. And what's interesting about it also is that it's not only, you know, you see these Jenna Marbles and these, you know, stars that have uh, established themselves online, but then there's all these new uh, online stars that are coming up that are uploading to platforms like Dailymotion and YouTube that are, are much different. It's just a different model, but audiences are enjoying it. They're super engaged, and if you're trying to reach those audiences, they're, they're great, there's a great place to do it. I think it's a question of making sure that it's brand safe, that the adjacency is brand safe, uh, but it also depends on the brand themselves. You know, a Red Bull's uh, tolerance for what con great content is is much different than an Amex, for example, uh, that may want to just be against heroes uh, or, or other shows that are. So, you know, it's, uh, it's a little bit more complex than that, especially when you add that whole native online uh, video content.